Hello, I'm Hazel A from Hazel A Patterns and today I am going to do a short tutorial for you to show you how to do the cross stitching around this sewing purse frame. This is my latest pattern, the double up glasses case. This is the prototype, um, but I'm actually in the middle of making the final one for the tutorial. So I thought rather than make a third one, I would actually stop and uh, film the stitching. Um, what you can see inside here is it is a double glasses case with a central divider. The idea being you can fit your sunglasses and reading glasses or two pairs of sunglasses, whatever you like. So this is it. I've already made a video for putting the, uh, doing the first round of stitches to attach your purse frame. Um, this is the one we're actually using this time. This is the final version. This is the frame I used last time in the last video. Now, one thing you will see is this original frame is much smaller uh, in depth than this newer one. So first thing I really want to show you here is, you see the difference there, oops. The actual depth at the back is much shorter in the older one than it is in the new one. So the one thing I would really say is it's essential to make sure you push your fabric, the actual case, right up into the top of the um, frame. There's a line of stitching there, which is the top stitching. You shouldn't be able to see that at all. If you can see it, it means that you're not quite far enough in and you'll probably find that your glasses case will actually be too big. Um, okay, warnings aside, let's get going. So what I'm using here is embroidery thros floss, I've used two strands because that is sufficient to get the look that you want, but you could always use a perle thread or something, something pretty. I've tied a knot in the bottom and the first thing I'm going to do is bury the knot up behind the frame. So let's pull it in. What I'm going to do is if I pull it along, actually push it up into the frame and then gently pull it. That should keep it nicely hidden. Oh, it's not quite far enough in. There we go. So I've come out on the first hole on one side. Now, for some reason, I'm working uh, right to left, but you might like to work left to right. We're going to do this like you would an ordinary cross stitch. So the idea is that you stitch all the way across in one direction and then stitch all the way back. So first things first, I'm actually going to put the needle in just underneath the second hole. So we've come out in the first hole, the needle goes in the second hole. Now it's always a little bit slow to start because you find yourself really hunting for the holes. But once you get into the hang of it, it's much easier. Ooh. Am I in? No. Right. You know that it's going to be just above the stitching there. Yay! Right, you might notice there's a little cut here in the video. That's because as I was stitching, I got so into what I was doing that I fell off the screen. I don't know. I'd like to say that I knocked my camera, but I think I was not concentrating on what I was doing. So, oh, let's put my thimble back on. This time, hopefully, you can see a lot better what I'm doing. So, I'll put in the needle just below that hole. Pull the thread through, bring it up through the next one. I should know by now not to do that. In fact, I did actually put things on the table so I could see where I was filming, but hey ho, it's warm. It's one of those mornings, so let's go for it. See things are actually going much quicker now and that is because I've got into the swing of things. Haha, <laughs> although I've just jinxed myself there. 
there we go so what I will do is I will stitch across to the other side and then I will go back the other way so you'll see a little time cut here and then I'll be back with you Ta -da! and it's finished the first row of stitches is done as you can see one side to the other what I'm going to do I've given people two options in the pattern you can take out the stitching at the end or you can take it out as you go along which I quite like to do because it means there's less chance of getting any of the thread caught up plus I like to see what it's going to look like when it's finished so let's pull out a couple of those so we can see where we're going and literally we're going to cross back over to the other side so where you can see the stitch went in here I'm going to put my needle I'm actually going to just put it slightly past and there we go first cross now I will say when I was stitching around having the bag on your lap actually so you can see what you're doing rather than stitching at arm's length does make it a lot easier oh I've gone in too far right so it's on the second stitch yeah it's very easy to skip crosses but hopefully I'll only do it once so back across up into the next one back across up into the next one that's it and essentially you just keep going round pull out the threads every so often there we go you can see the look that you're getting there I'm going to take another quick pause and then I will come back and show you the finished article and we're finished. You might notice another little change of fabric because I fell off the screen again. Whoopsie. Lesson learned for next time, hopefully. What I'm going to show you now, I've just finished here in the last cross stitch and my thread is now on the other side. Now, I used um, around a 70 centimetre or 27 inch length of thread because I quite like to work with long threads. If you don't like working with long threads, you might end up having to do this more than once. So I'm going to finish off by putting my needle in. I'm actually going to bring it out in the top seam. I don't know if you can see there. Yeah. What I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to switch to a different needle, which has got an open top. So you can literally just put your thread on it and pull it down into position Ooh, that's it let's try that again it's quite handy when you're finishing off with small lengths because you don't have to worry about re-threading it every time so you can see there come up a little way from the seam I'm going to go back down inside and work my needle so that it comes out in the side seam. There we go. It's really tough in there because there's loads of layers. So now I'm stretch it out so I can see that whole side seam down to the divider and I'm going to bury needle again still in that side seam but I can feel I'm going through layers of the um, seam allowance. I'm going to come out here 
we'll see if the thread gets too short it's another reason to use this particular kind of needle I'm going to go back in again I'm going to make sure I'm wriggling around inside to try and capture all the layers so I know it's going through something just going to check that it hasn't come out the other side and that's it so cut that off and you are done all you need to do now is give it a little steam there should be a bit of fullness around here but if it's formed into little wrinkles if you steam it it will bring it up nicely there we go and that's it okay bye for now